season for winter sports from Flyer Media Productions. This is Dave Gertz along with Mike Olson. Tonight, Mike, we've got the first Scrappers Conference match between the Little Falls Flyers in wrestling and the Big Lake Hornets. And welcome, Mike. Thanks for doing the play-by-play. -play. Thanks, Dave. It's uh, good to be back again for the season of Little Falls Flyers. Well, interesting kickoff to the year with Big Lake, which is not a traditional yeah. rival of Little Falls, but a, a match, a good match to get started for the year. The Little Falls Flyers, of course, perennial favorites in 8 AAA and always, always uh, put a respectable team out there. It'll be interesting to see what the Flyers bring to the mat this year. It's going to be interesting because I'm looking at the little uh, blurb that Coach Mike Hendrickson gave us. Uh, Big Lake is a member of Section 6 AA. They returned five wrestlers to finish in the top five from last year's section meet. We just got some introductions here off camera. But Logan Dene ranks sixth of state, along with Patrick Leibold, Derek Helga White, Yule, and Dylan O'Leary. So top wrestlers from Big Lake. And of course, Little Falls, no slouch in wrestling. No slouch in wrestling. And of course, they bring back a couple state entrants last year in Logan Caban and, and Josh Beek. Uh, both just a couple matches away from placing on the state tournament. And they bring, bring, bring forward today two, uh, three wrestlers, excuse me, ranked in the top 10 in the state in uh, Devin Nelson, number 10 at 106. And Alex, Alex, uh, Axel Wayne, Axel Wayne, yep, excuse yep. me, ranked number 10 also, and uh, follows up by Justin Jenks. Uh, at number eight, I believe. That is yep, fun. that's what we got. Justin Jenks at number eight. Jenks at 160, number eight in the state right now. And again, these are introductory rankings, and it'll be interesting to see as the year goes along how they hold up. And we haven't seen Big Lake wrestle before here in Little Falls. This will be a new experience for the Flyers here as they open up the season against the Big Lake Hornets. Not a conference game either. This is not a conference match. Uh, but it should be interesting. And, you know, of course, the Little Falls coaching staff, not unfamiliar with big teams in wrestling. Yeah, not at all. Uh, always scheduling those opponents that give them the best chance to be successful later on in the season. And Big Lake, of course, uh, probably uh, not in the caliber as we'll see on Friday night with Malacca and Princeton, but uh, certainly a, a quality opponent that uh, has a great youth wrestling program. I was talking to Steve Litke, a former football coach, math teacher here in Little Falls, whose son wrestled on the JB tonight, talking about their youth program and, and uh, what an outstanding the job, the job they do with the youth and that should transfer, of course, into a great varsity program. And it's interesting to see what we'll see here tonight. Well, it's kind of cool because I saw Grant Litke wrestle in the JV match. He pinned in about uh, 15 seconds. It was uh, uh, quite a match. Gr Grant is uh, going to be a quality, quality wrestler and be fun to watch for Flyer fans for years to come. We're going to get started here. Uh, I think we do have the lineups correct. Uh, at 106, we're going to have Devin Nelson from Little Falls wrestling Ryan Helgo coming up an eighth grader. And Devin's been in this uh, situation before because he started wrestling varsity, I believe, as an eighth grader, too. Devin has been wrestling uh, varsity for a long, long time. And this year, now it's his turn to shine as a senior, currently ranked number 10 at 106. And so he brings a, a state ranking to the table here in his first, first varsity match of the 2014 season is set to begin here shortly. As we're ready to get started, you know who's refing tonight? Mike? I do know. I've uh, worked uh, several meets and tournaments with Chris Etzler. Okay. Chris is from Staples, Minnesota, has been roughing uh, quite, a, quite an experienced referee and, and had the pleasure of roughing uh, Section 5 tournament with Chris a few years back. So he does, uh, again, uh, for experienced ref who does a good job. And he was here last year, too. I remember from one of our matches on uh, broadcast, too. Yep, he's been here before and, like I said, uh, experienced ref that does a nice job. Well, here we go. There you see the Devin Nelson uh, in the flyer purple against Ryan Helgo in the Big Lake Yellow. Devin Nelson aggressive right off the get-go, shot in on a single leg, working up the body and was able to manage to take Helgo down to the mat for two points. And Devin Nelson, a lanky wrestler at 106. I'm sure he weighed in pretty close to 106 today. Too. You know, I weighed the wrestlers in and he was right about 105, Ooh. I believe. So he's, he's right at that weight where he's a good size for 106 and uh, working control of uh, Mr. Helgo right now and continuing to work, take things away, hopefully work for some kind of a pinning combination and score some big team points here for the Flyers to get them started today. 
And Helgo, of course, one of the Section 6 AA champs from the last year's Section 6 AA meet. Watch closely by Etzler right now. Devin uh, out there working the uh, famous flyer cradle, uh, trying to get him, trying to get uh, Ryan Helgo in a predicament where he could turn him to the back, hopefully for some back points and a possible fall and 16 points. Score still 0-0. Uh, zero, zero. Oh, 2 nothing. I'm sorry. It's 2 nothing. Devin Nelson with the takedown. Devin Nelson had the takedown to start things and has been working on the top again to trick or turn him over. Uh, working the edge of the mat right now is, is uh, Ryan Helgo, and the referee will stop and bring him back to the center for a fresh start. Yeah, you can just see Devin exuding confidence. I had him in the middle school. He was a confident kid back there, but he just looks like he is just totally... Um, not thinking about a lot except winning this match right now. Yes, and across, across the state, you don't, you know, you just don't see a lot of seniors at that uh, lightest weight class, and you know, it's a, just one of those things with wrestling. So, you know, that is obviously to Devin's advantage to have the experience and to be wrestling, you know, finally wrestling, I guess, his size. Yeah, exactly. After all these years of being a little bit smaller, and uh, Brian able to hook up that elbow, get that far, that far elbow hooked up, trying to hook up the far side cradle, and that'll end the first period. Yep. Score 2-0, uh, a nice takedown by Devin Nelson, but a low-scoring match. Big Lake uh, won the toss and elected to have the choice in the odd matches. So odd matches meaning the number of the match. So this is the first match. Big Lake having the choice. He defers to Devin Nelson. Devin Nelson takes the down position. Ryan Helgo starts in that position to start the second period. I'm wondering, Mike, not knowing a lot about Big Lake, are we going to see matches go all the way through three three matches before we have a score or, or a well, pin. Well, it'll be interesting. Uh, you know, Devin just did a nice job, did a Granby roll there to gain two-point reversal, and he picked up, uh, we thought maybe he picked up some back points, but he didn't. So a nice reversal by Devin Nelson off the Granby roll, did a nice job. Good first move on the whistle, and uh, man, almost managed to pick up a couple back points, but Devin leading the match right now, 4-0. We're again working, trying to work that cradle, the famous flyer cradle. Flyer that, cradle. Uh, everybody, you know, the opposing coaches know full well that that's a, that's a move they're going to have to uh, combat if they're going to be successful, and I'm sure they've worked on it at Big Lake as well. What's what I'm wondering, do they, how do they scout on wrestling besides doing some films? They talk to each other around the league, around the area? Well, you know, as wrestling goes along, you see a lot of teams because of the tournament atmosphere, and you see some things. Devin able to there pick up the far side cradle and has... Ryan Helgo in trouble here as he's got working. back points. He's got back points and looking for that possible foul. He's off the coast. There it is. is the foul. Uh, one minute, 23 seconds of the second period. So Devin Nelson gets the flyer season off with a bang, with a pin in the second period. Uh, far side cradle turned into 16 points for the Little Falls Flyers. So nice way for the Flyers and Devin Nelson to open the 2014-15 season. And of course, coach is very proud. Mike Hendrickson, uh, just doing a wonderful job with his assistants, Bill Muschel, Simon Waltman on the sideline there. Coaches for uh, Big Lake, Evan Warner, and Justin Nelson and T. Baker. Yes, fairly a young staff for Big Lake, but uh, like I said, I took part in the way in, seemed to be uh, doing a nice job, had good control of their uh, team, and, and uh, yeah, just a good group, looks like a good young group of coaches to get Big Lake started also. Uh, this is going to be tough, Mike, because we got Logan Dunne, number six in the state, against uh, Dakota Kern. Yeah, for all every, all the research done on the match tonight, uh, Dave, it looks like Logan Dunne is by far and away Big Lake's best wrestler, according to, you know, the forecast for the season yep. and so on and for, so forth. But Dakota Kern, a tough kid, he, you know, coming right up off the middle school team and had a pretty successful middle school career. Uh, unfortunately for him, yeah, his first varsity experience is going to be against one of the best be kids. on his back, state. and there it is. At uh, uh, 50, 42 seconds of the first day, not wasting any time. Again, picked up a cradle to get the fall here against the Flyers. Dakota Kern ties the team score at six to six. We've got a coach going over to the bench. It looks possibly like uh, Big Lake. Mm. We're going to be a switch, I think. Here, I think we have a switch coming up. We'll have to kind of see who we got. We got li little Leo Wilson. Leo, you can't call him so much little anymore. <laughs> but we're at the 120 pound weight class. We got Leo Wilson. 
And Ben oh, Morris. Of course, he's on the list. Okay, we got Ben Morris for Big Lake and Leo Wilsek. And again, that Wilsek name is familiar to Flyer Wrestling fans. There's been uh, a Wilsek on the team now for well, seven, 40 years four almost. Years, because so. in 75, Paul Wilsek was one of our there state entrants. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's a common wrestling name here in Little Falls. And I think Leo is the uh, youngest brother of the recent Wilsek yes, brothers. Yes, yes. So, yep. Uh, we'll see, uh, did a nice job there, had a high crotch, which uh, which uh, Ben Morris countered. But Leo again working the front headlock here. And uh, real close to scoring there two, he there he is. There he gains control over his opponent, Ben Morris. Uh, Leo Wilson picks up two points. Good take down up, there. Very good takedown and in, in control. And you'll hear the flyer coaches yell, take things away. And that's what Leo's done with that leg. Taken away, trying again to work that you know, famous flyer cradle that they're trying to work right now. Once again, Leo, just a ninth grader. He wrestled varsity last year, and he was exciting last year, and he's gotten a lot more strength this year. That's correct. Leo, like I said, has been around wrestling forever and ever, and I think he probably wrestled about half time on the varsity last yep, year. he did. And uh, gained, a va gained valuable experience there and brings forward this year to uh, opening up this 2014 starting at 120-pound weight class for him. It's good for Leo to kind of like I think of Devin Nelson as I look at Leo, just really nonchalant, just wants to wrestle, wants to win, wants to get points. So Leo's able to uh, take take the leg away and hook up a cradle for his, or hook up a elbow for a second in trying to get that far side cradle hooked up, continuing to work the legs and take things away from the big lake wrestler, Ben Morris. Um, ben Morris, of course, trying to generate some offense, not able to do a whole lot from the down position at this point. And referee Etzler keeping a close eye on this. He wants to make sure no stalls are happening here. 23 seconds left in the first period. They were able to hook up the far side cradle again, or not the far side cradle, but the far elbow and, and trying to get that far side cradle. Oh, yeah. and he's awful close to doing that. Uh, 12 seconds though, Mike. Morris fighting him off. Short time left. Um, doesn't look like Leo is gonna be able to hook that cradle up for back points here in the first period. Nope. And the period will end, uh, Leo up two nothing. Leo up to nothing again. Big Lake uh, won the toss and we'll get choice in odd matches. So Ben Morris will get his choice. He defers the choice to the third period for Leo. Leo takes the neutral position and hopefully will be able to uh, garner another takedown here and up that score to 4-0. Leo looks like he's given up about maybe three inches in height to uh, Ben Morris. Yeah, you know, not maybe not your traditional 120 pounders. Yeah. A little taller yeah. and both, both of them have similar builds here. So pretty well matched as far as physical stature goes. Want to thank our crew tonight. We're kind of shorthanded on our crew, but Flyer Media Productions is proud with Alex Rozeka, Amaya Richner, and Damian Jasky bringing this action to you live tonight. Streamed on High School Cube. Tape delayed for Channel 181, our upcoming cable channel back online, hopefully by the end of 2014. Exciting time to have uh, local cable access back yes. to our uh, constituents here in Little Falls. It is. Brought to, uh, brought to them by Little Falls School District. That's right, and that's our channel, yep. and, uh, and we'll so be providing quality broadcasting 24 hours a day. Not everything is gonna be live, of course, but everything we have here on High School Cube will be live. Score remains two nothing. Uh, wrestlers went out of bounds back to the center. Leo Wilsek uh, trying to gain control, set some kind of a setup here that she can work some kind of a takedown against Ben Morris from Big Lake Hornets. And uh, again, two zeros a score as they work for control. Kind of a slow moving, not a bad crowd here tonight for a Tuesday night. The weather's a little better outside finally, but uh, all the Little Falls fans, Big Lake fans, all into it tonight. Yeah, not a bad crowd for an opening night. You know, we got a lot of stuff going on. The basketball team's playing tonight. The hockey yep. team, I believe, is playing up at Morris Benson tonight. So, you know, it kind of disperses that crowd a little bit. It uh, does. So, Actually, the basketball team is not playing tonight. They actually practiced this morning at 6 a.m. Oh, that's right, because they couldn't practice after school. Right, right? so they've been uh, they've been doing it a little bit now, and coaches seem to like it, and the players seem to like it. So a little different, a little different thinking out of the box for practice-wise, I guess, for uh, How about the teachers who want to play basketball in the morning? <laughs> they're they're going to have to be sidelined for the <laughs> basketball team for a while. But ben Morris able to uh, gain two-point takedown against Leo, just kind of a spin-behind move that he was able to gain control of Leo. Referee stops it. Looks like we've got some got blood, I think. equipment or blood uh, issue. Looks like blood, perhaps. One of the wrestlers is bleeding. It looks like maybe Leo Wilsek has a little blood. Referee stops the match for cleanup. Little timeout here, two to two, and it's six to six uh, match score right now. A pin by Devin Nelson of Little Falls at 127. 
of the second period and a pin by Logan Dunne from Big Lake at 42 seconds of the first. That's your scoring, and we're in the 120-pound match right now, and it's all looking good here. Mike, you're looking good, too. Look at that hey, camera. Thanks, David. Here, I'm looking at the camera, and whoop, we got flipped there, so uh, yeah, it's looking good. Um, Exciting way to get the winter sports season off. It is, very nice. Uh, I got to tell you, too, uh, this week, as you mentioned on Friday, we have the double duel meet against Malacca and Princeton here at 5 o'clock. That's going to be live streamed again right here on High School Cube, Channel 181. Next Tuesday night, boys basketball home opener here. We're doing that game, too. So Steve Jones and I will be calling that one. That's, uh, that's you know, that's a great way to start again this fall winter season. Oh. We're off and running before we know it spring, you know, the March Madness will be upon <laughs> Absolutely. us. Absolutely. I was going to mention something about Friday night's match. It is a double duel. It's not a triangular. Yes. So uh, Little Falls will wrestle Malacca, always a perennial power, not only in the conference, but in the section mm -hmm. and the state for that matter. And... Uh, it's going to be an exciting match. That match will take place at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock so right here. We're going to watch that first. And Malacca will wrestle because that is a conference duel. That will be first. And then they all, Little Falls will follow that up with a match against the Princeton Tigers. And so a uh, full night of wrestling for people who want to come out or if they simply want to listen yep. here at uh, Listen to our broadcast, I guess. Now, so. the reason that's a double duel is because Princeton uh, was supposed to have a match on the I think the last Friday before Christmas vacation, the 19th, and something happened. They had to move it up. They must have had a scheduling conflict. Princeton had a scheduling conflict. They were double booked, and so in order to keep the match on the schedule for our team and to help Princeton as well, uh, we did the double duel thing, which is not a normal event uh, in wrestling circles, but uh, certainly works. Our kids will get two nice matches in, um, and again, we'll get some quality matches in, you know, before that winter break or that, that Christmas break, which, believe it or not, is only... 15 or 14 I days know. away, school days away. So, Well, the only uh, bummer about this, Mike, is that that's going to conclude our wrestling season broadcast, too, because there are no more dual meets at home, and uh, we're trying to get duels, which are a little easier to broadcast. But I cannot wait to see the double duel. I haven't seen one of those for years. Yeah, that'll be an interesting meet. And, again, uh, the way wrestling works right now, the number of matches that they have to get in, you know, sometimes, you know, parents will say, well, geez, why don't we have more home matches? The unfortunate thing is they have to wrestle in a lot of, quadrangulars, mm -hmm. triangulars, tournaments in order to get the matches in so that by the end of the year, the wrestlers ha are close to that 36 match limit. So when they go to the seating for the sections, we're comparing apples to apples. Exactly. And so we, and of course, that's the ultimate goal for our coaches, for our fans, for the wrestlers themselves. You know, get seated in that section tournament and get a chance to go down to the big show down at the XL Center in St. Paul that last week in February. Now that hasn't changed since we've uh, gone to the Granite Ridge Conference, has it? Uh, Central Lakes was the same way. We had a lot more conference well, dual matches in Central Lakes, I thought. Um, but I was looking at the teams that are in the Granite Ridge. They all have wrestling teams. So. Right. That hasn't changed a whole lot. The only one that doesn't is Cathedral. They're paired with Apollo. Yep. But uh, it, it hasn't changed other than the fact that years and years ago, uh, I think like back in my day of wrestling, back we're about the same age, graduated in 79, uh, you know, you, if you got 15 matches a year, that was a lot. Oh, my god. Well, now they get 36. They yep. can have 18 events and 36 matches. So, you know, in order to do that, you have to do a lot of, it isn't just the old days like we did with the traditional duel. You come in and wrestle one team and go home. That's that's changed a lot. Yeah, a lot. So, so the, it's a similar, you know, the sections and sections of state, you know, conference is separate from that. So, and again, uh, Granite Ridge, of, of all the sports in the Granite Ridge, one could argue that wrestling might be the toughest from top to bottom as far as teams go. Some quality wrestling programs yeah, in the Granite Ridge Just conference. looking at the side wall there, it's Foley, it's Malacca in our conference again. Now, Leo Wilson looks like he's getting a little more control here. Well, Leo started on top here in the third period. The score is 2-2. Two to two. We kind of talked through that second period, but uh, with Ben Morris managing to take down to start the, start the uh, period and then kind of rode, rode Leo out from there. But here we start the third period with Leo on top, trying again to work that far side cradle, now hooking up what we call a high half, trying to get some kind of offense going from the top position. Ben Morris uh, on the bottom, trying to get back to his base and, and create some kind of space or some kind of movement so that he can get an escape or, or go back to his feet. Leo doing a really nice job of taking things away from Ben Morris right now and keeping him busted down flat on the mat. And again, trying to work some offense on top. Well, Leo had a kind of a nasty nosebleed there too. Yep, I think they both had a little bit of nosebleed. They both managed to garner some blood here in the first match of the year. And this isn't even a blood sport anymore. Not, not anymore. Nope, so. Not anymore. <laughs> Yeah, both of them putting the cotton back in their noses. They're both got the little nosebleed. And, it, you know, 
What happens in wrestling a lot of times is not so much that they get banged in the nose. It's oftentimes so dry it's in the gym, so you dry. Can it. You can feel how dry it is, and that nose gets dry. And I know when I was coaching in the past, a lot of times we had some kids that would bleed a lot. We would just, you know, give them the Vaseline and put the Vaseline yep. in the nose so that it would moisten it so it wouldn't bleed as much. But well, worst uh, case scenario, you can't continue if your blood bleeding doesn't stop. You got five minutes of blood time, and the way it works is. Uh, once the bleeding is stopped, the blood time stops, so the cleanup time doesn't count. So it, uh, when you get those matches with two kids that are bleeding a lot, they can take a long, long time yeah. to get to uh, five minutes. And it, I haven't seen, I don't know in my recollection right now if I've ever seen anybody disqualified for blood because it takes a long time to get that five minutes. I was thinking back to a tournament a few years back where we had one, it was, I don't know, it might have been a section we hosted here, and that thing went on, and it was about a 15 minute match by the time it was done, and the kid was down to like his last 10 seconds of blood time and was able to finish the match, and it was like for a true second match. Oh so man. It was, uh, it was pretty intense, and the coaches were scrambling, but uh, I can't remember. One of our kids was involved in it, and he, our kid wasn't the bleeder, it was the other's team, but I don't remember the result, but. I know it was close. Well, look at this for Leo, 21 seconds, Mike. Can he get another couple points here? Leo Wilson trying to do a great job, and of course, if he's able to ride him out here, we're gonna go in 15 seconds into overtime. Once again, for those fans, a uh, reminder, overtime period would be a one minute uh, kind of uh, sudden death. First score, score wins. First score wins, I believe, is the way we still do it, yes. And then if they don't do that, then they both go down for 30 seconds, so. I think that's the overtime rules. I asked Chris, are there any big rule changes before we broadcast tonight? And he said, everything's pretty much the same. So. All right. And so Leo, does he have it? Five seconds. Can he get control? Leo maintains oh. uh, going to overtime here at 2-2. Two -two. So they'll come right back to the center of mat. Both of them go to the feet. Of course, both wrestlers have scored a takedown against the other. So this might come down to who, you know, who's got any, how, how much stamina do you have left here early in the season? Uh, you know, who, who can set something up here or get the other one off balance and try to create some kind of offense here. Well, I like the fact, too, there's no time off between here. They just go, and they're they tired go. after they're the tired. third period. And again, the first match of the year is probably not, yeah. as a wrestler, saying, I'm not really in, too fond of this overtime right off the get-go, but Leo with a nice high crotch move there, able to pick up the arm and gain control. Oh, boy. He's been through, countered by Ben Morris. Now Leo's in deep on that single leg takedown, but his head's on the outside. If he could switch to a double, he might have Mr. Morris in trouble, but... Uh, ben Morris got the ankle, is blocking now, and uh, we'll see if Mr. Etzer calls a stalemate here, which is, could happen, or they'll come out of bounds here. He's like. got out of bounds, boy, a little safety net there. 15.8 seconds to go in the overtime period here. Wow, Leo looked like he had a good shot there, getting a couple points. Nice job of being the aggressor on that. Went from a high crotch, switched off to a, a single leg takedown with his head on the outside. And again, if he could have switched to that double leg takedown, he might have got Mr. Morris in trouble. But Ben Morris, of course, grabbing the leg and hanging on and not allowing Leo to finish the takedown. Down to five seconds. Looks like we're heading for double overtime. Double overtime. And the rule after double overtime? The, a double overtime, what happens, Dallas, uh, they'll do double overtime. Referee flips the thing. Uh, choices belongs to Big Lake. He has a choice of going down or up. Uh, he deferred, so now Leo Wilsek will get the choice of up or down. They both get 30 seconds here. Um, Leo will go down and attempt to score. It's not sudden death, so yep. the match continues. Okay. And then after this period, Big Lake will get their choice to what they want to do. If the score is still tied after those two 30 seconds, then it, then it comes down to a 30 second period again. Bottom guy needs to score. Top guy rides up, top guy wins. So that's where we're at right now. We're in double overtime. Uh, again, both guys have scored a takedown apiece. No points from the top or bottom for me, the wrestlers. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how much stamina is left for both these wrestlers here as they enter double overtime. Well, Down to six seconds. We've never seen this before. <laughs> Down to six seconds. I think we've had a few overtimes, but yep, they've, always not ended in, they've always ended in the uh, first overtime period. Well, so here comes 30 seconds. So now Big, Big Lake, Lake has a choice. Do they? Looks like they're going to take down. 30 seconds. Leo Wilson, of course, needs to get a good breakdown and attempt to turn him for some points. Big Lake. Uh, Robbie just needs to get away and, and fend off any type of attack from Leo Wilsick. So it'll be an exciting 30 seconds here. Referee blows the whistle. Leo Wilsick does a nice job of breaking uh, Ben Morris down, is on top. He needs to continue to work for that fall. Maybe get some back points here to win this match. This could be a great end to the match for Leo. We're down to 15 seconds in the match. Leo again doing a nice job of riding, breaking Morris down. Morris trying to get back to his base. Uh, Leo Wilsick putting a leg in. 
It's gonna be awful tough unless it's gonna be tough for Ben Morris to score if Leo can continue to keep that leg in and keep the pressure on. Two seconds, Mike. And there it is, down to two seconds. So now what happens here, they're gonna go into the third and final overtime. It goes back to whoever scored the first offensive points has a choice. So Leo, Leo Wilson, of course, scored the first takedown. So now he has a choice. Leo is going to take up and try to ride Ben Morris. If he rides him, he wins the match. So that's, that's where we're at. So it's an interesting, uh, puts an interesting uh, decision sometimes on matches that are gonna be close if there's no points scored as to what we do. So, wow. So here we are. So again, Leo Wieslak getting his first offensive points with that first period takedown has a choice here in the, in the triple overtime. Wow, this is the first time we've ever seen this so in a match. Leo did a nice job of breaking him down. Morris coming back to his bait. Leo needs to continue to take things away and not give Mr. Morris any space. Morris to his feet. We'll see if Leo is able to break him back Can down. He do it? That. Leo is able to pick up the leg. That's experience there where he dropped down and picked up the double leg. We're down to 10 seconds. If Leo Wilson can ride him out, he's going to be the victor in this triple overtime match. Four seconds, Mike. Down to force looks like Leo Wilson is going to win this in overtime. And what a it. match for what Leo Wilson. We, I think that you're right. I think that's the first triple overtime match that we've uh, broadcast. And we've got it right on High School Cube live, live on television. It's awesome. Great job by our cameraman, Damian Jaschke, too, for that match. And Leo Wilson gets his hand raised by Chris Etzler. And that's uh, two points for Little Falls. Two points for Little Falls. Great, uh, great start to uh, the, the season for Leo on that and give him a little confidence and knowing that he can go the distance and then some. Wow, that was really exciting. I just, I like that overtime rule. No time to waste, man. Uh, Lane Rutten for Little Falls at 126 going against, I believe it's Heath Foster. Heath Foster for Big Lake. Lane Rutten, again, Lane Rutten, one of those young, experienced wrestlers for Little Falls. Been around the wrestling mat uh, for a couple years here, off and on in the varsity, on the JV, uh, wrestling family, wrestled a many, many matches in his youth career. And here he is wrestling at 126 in uh, the start of the 2014 Flyers wrestling season. And Foster's getting a little dipsy doodle ups and down here right now. Foster in on a double leg takedown, but his head is the middle, needs to try to get that head to the outsider to finish through the uh, legs of Lane Rutten for two points. Lane blocking, trying to keep, trying to keep Heath Foster's uh, hips down and not, a, not allow him to finish. Referee Chris Etz will probably give him a little bit more time here, and at some point he's going to end up calling a stalemate, it looks like to me, and there it is. So a stalemate uh, stops the match here in the first period, scores 0-0, zero, zero. one minute gone in the first period, time for a fresh start. Now one thing with our high school cube stream, we get featured sometimes on their clips of the week, so I'm clipping some of these things so they can go Viral. There yeah, you hopefully go. some of these things are going to go online. Yeah, if you're into that technology stuff. I, I told it. you, I'm still a boomer. I'm learning, but I'm, it's slow. But when I text you, you always respond. There you go. <laughs> Lane, even at quarter to five in the morning when you weren't feeling well. Uh, Lane Rutten here uh, in on a nice double leg, kind of in the same place that Foster was in before. Uh, and there he's able to finish. Lane Rutten, two points, take two down. Two points. Start the match. They were both interesting. They both ended up in the same position, but this time Lane Rutten was able to get his hips up and finish the move uh, that Heath Foster wasn't able to finish. So Lane Rutten taking things away, looking like he's trying for that famous flyer far side cradle. He has it hooked up. He has Heath Foster in trouble. Here in the first period, about seven seconds to go. There it is. There's a fall at wow. 155. 155, Mike. Of the first period, another six points for Little Falls. I was wrong, Mike. They gave three points for the win by Leo Wilson. Oh, yes, two. three point decision. Not two. Yep, three point decision, yes. Well, so Little Falls opens up two pins. Lane Rutten at 155 of the first period pins Heath Foster. And we're 15 to six here, Mike. Logan Caban coming out, state entrant for Little Falls last year. You know, undoubtedly has that goal set again for himself to not only make it to the state tournament, but to make uh, make some noise when he's down there. And certainly has the talent and the ability to do that. I know talking to Logan this fall and in during lunch and so on and so forth, that uh, you know he's been working really hard. He's been going up and training, and, and he's hasn't taken a lot off in the off season. And again totally committed to get back to that state tournament and uh, you know uh, hopefully hopefully bring back a medal. Mike I didn't hear who they're having a 130. You know I was busy wrestling. talking I didn't as well I didn't so um, 
I mean, we apologize for that online. We don't have a name, so we'll just keep that blank. I don't know who it is because there's nobody in the 132 slot. So it could be somebody from the JV team. Could be maybe Sam, Sam Wendblum. Wendblum, I believe, possibly would be the only one that looks like he would be qualified uh, that made the weight. We might call him Sam then for a lack of a better term, but thanks a lot to our graphics person, Maya Richer, for getting right on top of that. 104 to go in the first period here at 132. Logan, the best big, uh, big lake wrestler, still center of the mat, trying to open things up here. Logan with the elbow collar. Oh, and a beautiful nice duck take under. Down. Beautiful wow. duck under. Scores two points here to start uh, start this match. Two, four to one. Four to one. Yep. Four to one. I missed a takedown by Logan. Apologize, Logan, for that. So. Uh, I got it on the clip. Don't worry. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Logan again, trying to take things away. Work from the top. Looking to put in the high half at this point, down to 20 seconds in the first period. Four to one, Kapan. Little Falls making a great showing here in their opening match of the season against the Big Lake Hornets. As you mentioned, too, Mike, that coaching staff looks pretty young for Big Lake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, man. Uh, but again, I, I was impressed with their demeanor and so on and so forth in the locker room as they were doing the way in. And seemed to have the kids ready to go here tonight. And the first period ends uh, four to one, Logan Capan. Four to one, Logan Capan. Big Lake's choice. He chooses down. I believe we think it's we think it's Sam Wendblum. We believe. I'm told by the Big Lake fans that's Caleb Ewell on the Jewel on the mat right now. Okay. Okay, Caleb Jewell is not in our, not in our. Nope, he was at 126. Oh, he was at 126. They moved him down. They moved him, they moved him up to 132, I see. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, so Caleb Jewell is one of the more experienced wrestlers this year, according to what we got from Coach Hendrickson. Yep. Uh, and so Logan Capan able to take him down again and lead six to two. Six, six point lead, no, excuse me, four point lead for Logan Capan. We haven't talked a lot about team scoring here. You mentioned two points for the win uh, by Leo Wilsek in overtime, and, and uh, you're showing your age because we used to be two points it was for a draw. It was, two, it was points. two points for a draw, but they don't longer have draws anymore. You have to break. There is no ties. So I think that's great because yeah, it keeps that sport it's, going. It's exciting. You know, it's a little bit of a takeoff from uh, everything kind of filters down. The Olympics have freestyle and Greco-Roman, and a lot of the kids do that, and this is kind of designed to open things up and, and, and again, NCAA overtime periods or, or overtime criteria is similar and uh, now the high school does the same thing. So it does make it really exciting and like I said, it was a big win for Leo Wilsick winning in triple overtime. Well, I'll tell you what, that can make or break a match too. But sure can, huh. sure can. That three points is big. And Logan Capan doing some riding on Caleb Ewell right now. 30 seconds uh, remaining uh, in the second period. Logan Capan up 6-2 and in control on top at this point, trying to set up an arm bar or anything to try to turn Caleb Jewell over and score some more team points for the Flyers. Started to mention team points, of course. The uh, team scoring is, is uh, a decision is worth three. A major decision, which is a team that scores at least eight point difference in the match, uh, would get a four point. Yep. Technical fall, which is when you're ahead by 15 points or more, would score five points, and of course a pin is six, six points. points. Yep. So, and the 15 to six now the match score here between Little Falls and Big Lake. Two minutes to go now in the second period. Actually, we're in the third period. The third maybe. period. Excuse yep. me. Third period. Logan Capan uh, was been able to take Caleb Jewell down three times and see if he can do it again. Uh, Caleb Jewell attempting a headlock. Logan Capan battling it off, trying to battle off. He does have a leg hooked if he can get his head out. And there's two more points for a takedown for Logan Capan. Logan's ahead eight to two, up by six points, decides to go ahead and let him up. It looks like maybe trying to attempt uh, some takedowns here and attempt to get four team points for the Flyers instead of just a decision. There's another there takedown by Logan Capan. Makes a score 10 to three. Coaches are asking him to release him and give him a point for an escape and try to do another takedown. And uh, Logan's, major hand decision is, here. Logan's hand is captured underneath Caleb Jewell at this time. I'm assuming as soon as he can pull that hand out. There's Caleb Jewell warned for stalling by referee Chris Etzler. 
Logan goes is wanting to let him go, but it's going to do that safely here at the edge of the mat. Yep. So, so no points scored there. So here's a change in wrestling. It looks like uh, in the old days you had to start on top and you could let him go. Now, if you want to let him go, you could just do that. And so you'll and see that point. and take the yep. point. So Caleb Jewell gets a point for an escape, even though and they just start the period on their feet. And again, the local Capan trying to get one more takedown here to be up by at least eight points and score that one more team point for the Flyers. It's 10 to four right now too. Kipan now again, Kipan with a takedown now scores a 12 four, he's up by eight points with about 45 seconds to go. Looks like the coaches are satisfied with that eight point lead at this time. Of course, Logan gonna try to attempt to turn him, maybe get a fall here and get 16 points. He's got the arm bar hooked up, trying for a double arm bar. And if he can get that, that's an awful tough situation for a wrestler to be in. Uh, for the big lake wrestler. Logan again has the arm bar. It looks like he's got the arm tucked in, trying for a tilt of some kind. Again, attempting to get back points. Down to 20 seconds to go in the third period here. Kapan up 12 to four, up by eight point difference in the match, which if the match ended now would score 14 points for the Flyers. And Logan's still working, working, working. And Caleb doesn't want to do much moving. Six seconds to go. We did have uh, one warning for stalling in the match by referee Etzler, but it looks like it's going to end with a 10, 12 to 4 decision for Logan Caban, who gives up a major decision, gives up 14 points. And there we go. Makes our team score 19 to 6 after the 132 pound match. Flyers in the lead at this point. Moving on to 138. We got Wyatt Lillamo listed against Patrick Liebel. Let's see if that's who's up there. We'll see. And 138 pounds, wrestling for the Hornets, Patrick Liebel. Yep. For the Flyers, Wyatt Lillamo. Yep, there we go, Lillamo against Liebel. Liebel a senior, Lillamo a sophomore. Uh, again, some experience for Lillamo at uh, wrestling last year a little bit, I believe, for the Flyers. He did, he came in later in the season, yep. I believe. Yep. And off the mat, Chris Etzler whistles him back. Senior Patrick Liebel from Big Lake, I believe is mentioned as one of their returning. Yep, uh, uh, he along with Helgo, White Ewell, and Dolan O'Leary are listed as being fairly consistently good wrestlers for the Hornets. Look like they're pretty evenly matched body styles and kind of a standoff right now at 138. Both wrestlers kind of feeling themselves out here in the first period, trying to get a feel for what the other one wants to do. Both wrestlers tied up. Now, now get into what they call the open position, and uh, Lillamo with the elbow collar tie. A shot by Liebel, nothing there. Liebel with the rush of two on one, attempting to get control here, but uh, Lillamo doing a nice job of countering just by grabbing the ankle, trying to fend it off. Um, Liebel trying to right. finish up through the crotch, and, and Lillamo doing a nice job of defending. Good defense. 42 seconds to go in the first period. Liebel trying to work his way through. There's a stalemate. So that would be a good job of defending that takedown by Wayne Wyatt, excuse me, Lillamo. Still no score here, Mike. 33 seconds to go in the first. Good shot by Liebel created that scramble at, at the uh, middle of that first period. As we end the later stage of the first period, they're off the mat, they'll come back to the center for a fresh start. Patrick Liebel, the senior from Big Lake, wrestling at 138, versus Wyatt Lillamo of Little Falls, sophomore. We got 15 seconds left in this first period. Lillamo with a double underhook, trying to uh, gain some control. Oh boy, just like, off uh, the mat, just about. Off the mats. Both, both wrestlers, it would've been an interesting scramble if it was in the middle. Lillamo looked like he was in trouble for a second, but was able to get those hips up, so it would've been an interesting uh, scramble if they'd have been in the center of the mat. Down to four seconds to go in the first period. There's a stalling uh, warning. And that's on Flyers. Yep. Stalling warning on Wyatt Lillamo. Uh, he was backing up, and they need to uh, work the circle. Just can't back straight up, and that's what Co referee Etzler saw. And we got uh, Lillamo de first. So they're up. Lillamo de first. Libel just uses the neutral position. Feels he had an advantage on his feet a little bit. Was close to a couple takedowns. Oh boy. There's a fireman's carry for two points. First one. A little more down, 2-0 here against Patrick Leibel, the senior from Big Lake. 
Libel working to try to do a half. Nelson at this point to try to get some back points or turn, turn Little Mo over, Little Mo on his base, trying to create some kind of uh, space to get up to his feet, either get an escape or reversal. Boy, and Liebel is just working that right side. Seems to have some success there. He's got, uh, had, a, had a half Nelson, a little more able to fight it off. Trying to get his hands back forward again to get back to his base, get some space created, and try to get some, try to get an escape or a reversal. A little more, excuse me, Liebel doing a great job of, hit too many L's in this. Yeah, too many <laughs> Liebel, uh, there they are. Trying, <laughs> trying to keep, keep him broken down and good for the fall here. And it's two nothing, uh, Little uh, libel, not libel, not little. Mo. You're right. I'm doing the same thing. Two nothing libel here as we enter this, you know, final minute of period number two. Two zero. Not a lot of action going on right now. A lot of no. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot happening, but not a lot happening. Boy. You know what I mean? When you're wrestling out there, you're exuding a lot of energy and strength to try to continue to maintain your base or to try to get a turn, but not a lot of action as far as a flurry goes. I have to say that Wyatt is doing a great job on defense right now. I know he doesn't want to be on the defense, but. He's stretching out, not letting Liebel have anything. Trying to maintain a good base, and again, trying to get some space created so he can get either back to his feet or create some kind of space to set up one of the Granby rolls that the Flyers are noted for, or possibly come to his feet, get an escape, go back to the neutral position. Right now, it looks like Lillamo is trying to reach inside and grab that leg, possibly set up some type of a roll situation. Liebel's got a front headlock there. It's gonna be tough to it's score in that tough. position. Down to 20 seconds to go in the second period. 2-0, Libel. Uh, again, both wrestlers just in a kind of a tough position to do any scoring, either for Lillamo on the bottom or Libel on top. Down to eight seconds to go in the second period. And Etzer's letting them go. They're not doing any stalling around. They're working for position. And there's the end of the second period at 138. Uh, Patrick Liebel, 2 nothing against Wyatt Lillamo. And Liebel gets, uh, uh, Wyatt gets Wyatt, chased. Wyatt Lillamo looks over to the coaches. Coaches say, you know what, let's go on top. So I'm guessing that uh, Mr. Lillamo is thinking, okay, I think I can cradle you, Mr. Liebel. Uh -huh. There we go. That's kind of what the idea is going to be here. So senior Patrick Liebel for Big Lake down, start this third period. Wyatt Lillamo on He's top. got the setup. He's got the setup. He's got the leg taken away. He's reaching across, trying to get that far arm. Uh, he's got the long arms there. Oh, so boy, breaks him down. Nice breakdown there, down Wyatt. Real aggressively. He's really aggressive on top right now. Looks like he might have that cradle hooked up. Can he spin now him, it's though? It's a matter of whether he can turn him or he not. He got him. He's uh, in a tough position there. He's got to watch himself. She doesn't give up an offensive. Well, what a move. It was a nice move to come back. He was in a little bit of trouble there. He almost could have gave up an offensive ball where the offensive wrestler yeah. beats himself. This is going to be one those back points. It is extremely tight. This could be this could be the pin. This could be a fall situation. Lillibo doing a great job of hooking up that far side cradle. Unfortunately, he lost the arm. Yeah. Yeah. At uh, 112, uh, excuse me, 52 seconds of the third period, Ryan Lillibo. Ryan Lillibo able to catch Patrick Leibel in the far side cradle and hooked into a false cradle but was able to get a fall out of out of it for the six more team points for the flyers makes the score 25 to 6 entering the 145 pound match here which on paper shows axel lang currently rated i believe 10th uh class what do we got triple a axel lang 10th um, yep and uh wrestling against parker millam wait, uh, wait, wait, wait this is one four that's josh beak 145. oh yep okay they're a little off on our lineup here. Oh, see I'm that? Sorry, you got it's it. Okay, it's Beak, but he's uh, stayed entrant last year. Josh Beak stayed entrant, and again, just missed qualifying for the medal round. And again, I'm sure he's got his uh, calendar marked with the oh. uh, state tournament down in Excel in the end of that last week of February. And, oh, and there's a. Uh, what they <laughs> what they call the emu catcher it was able to pick up two points plus three for a back points very quickly there that's the uh, dwight blue move isn't that's it? the dwight blue move you got it so uh, did a nice job quick two points uh no back work. points i thought he was back points, no, but he didn't so got up a little bit fast two points for oh he did get oh he did they got him yep, yep. Three, five to one now for beak five to one beak beak in on a single leg takedown that he turns into two points for Turns into two points for a takedown. Yep, there they got it. They switched our score. Oh, there they got it. Our scoreboard's going wacky. It is six to one. Six to one. You got two point near fall in that, yep. uh, in that first flurry. Gets another takedown, lets him go, makes the score six to two as they award the escape to the Big Lake wrestler. 
Got to say, Mike, Josh has got the most exciting action right now so far, pushing so things far, going. He's really pushing along. He is. On a nice Look at this. Take wow, down. what a takedown. Pushes to a double and is able to get two more points, trying to hook up that far side cradle. And there's another far side cradle. Wow, it's can we have another foul tough. here? I'm not sure he's going to be able to work his way out of that one. Josh Beek, extremely strong. And I think got you're right, Mike. Far side cradle. It's going to be awful tough for that big lady. There it is. And there it is. 120, 121 of the first period. Another pin, Mike, that's number four for the Flyers. So Beek pins Millam at 140, uh, 120 of the first period. Nice job by Josh Beek. you got to like his aggressiveness, and hopefully he can continue to carry that kind of energy and uh, match speed throughout the rest of the year. If he does that, I'm looking forward to see what he does throughout the season. Axel Lang, now Axel Lang. This is actually rated and Ben Beckers, yep. And rated 10th in the state at... Uh, one 152 right now. At, uh, Axel's at 152 rated, 10th in the state. Again, a very experienced Little Falls wrestler. has been in the varsity lineup for a long time. Very aggressive on his feet. Tried to hook up a uh, throw of some kind there. He's given up a couple. Of, it Axel like Lang on a nice inches. single leg takedown. He's going to take the leg away. And oh, we got a dangerous move here. Got a potentially like. dangerous move. Yeah. The one, the knee bent a little bit farther than referee would sort of like to see. So. For the betterment of the wrestler and the safety, they stopped it, and we'll start over. So Axel Lang on the move. Axel again trying to get control, trying to snap the big lake wrestler, Ben Beckers, to the mat. Axel's been real close to scoring a couple takedowns, but hasn't able to finish at this point. Right now it's two to one, Lang ahead. Axel was able to pick the Russian two on one up, but. Ben Becker's able to work his way off the mat, get a fresh start. But these middle weights There's a too beautiful double pass. What they call a college double leg takedown. Did a nice job, Axel Lang did. Picked up two points for the takedown. Just under a minute to go in the first period. Axel Lang up 2-0, now picks up the high half. If he can stretch him out and get that extended, he might score some points with it. If oh, he, he looks score, like he's in good position. He's got the wrist away and got the half on, and he needs to get... Uh, Needs to get Ben Becker stretched out so he can get the turn. Gives up the half, switches up to the cradle. Uh, see, we'll see if he's able to run that head and knee together. Boy, he is strong. Wow. He's got it just about hooked. Becker's is just uh, fighting to not get that leg Becker's in a bad position. A, Becker's doing a nice job of countering the offense by Axel Lang. Axel Lang has it hooked up the far side cradle now. He's got it. He's able to score with it. Uh, but uh, Becker's got the leg, though. Becker's is really deep uh, he he's does got get, some he points here back points and it's kind of an interesting far side cradle can he I don't know if he can get that far side shoulder because of their situation yeah he's and not his hit that's so. the end of the first period well he's got two more three more points seven to one seven to one I was saying these middle weights are just run and gun take down put them up take down put them up well coached by Mike Hendrickson Axel's choice here in the second period Defers to Big Lake. Big Lake wrestler chooses down. Oh Axel is going to, is going to ride the Big Lake wrestler and attempt for another fall or another turn, I should say. That may be leading to a fall. Axel doing a nice job breaking the Becker the Big Lake wrestler down. Excuse me, I believe is Becker's. Yeah, close to Becker. <laughs> Big Lake. They're Becker, right next to. So but they're not Axel. consolidated. They're not consolidated. Nope. nope. So Axel's got the arm across, trying to pick up. There he's able to pick there up this arm. Here. This and could be it. Now, so this is extremely tight. It's going to be awful difficult for the big leg wrestler to make his way out of this one as Axel again using that strength and leverage. Be awful tough for the big leg wrestler. He's in trouble with a minute and 30 to go in the second period. Axel only in control here on top. There it is. There's the fall. And, uh, That's the fifth fall. 28 seconds. At 28 seconds, uh, 38 seconds of the second period. So 2.38. Wow. Makes Another pin, Mike, you are right. That is number one, two, three, four, five falls for Little Falls. Five falls for Little Falls, and uh, we're looking at a 37 to six match score. Now Justin Jinx, uh, little brother, AJ out. AJ. AJ out at 160. We're at 160 already. I was gonna ask, what did Hendrickson wrestle when he was uh, in high school, was you he? know, I think his senior year, if I remember, my memory is correct, I think Mike graduated in 1982. 
I believe. Wrestled at 126. One, I was thinking it's got to be 126 uh, or 138. I think he was 126 his senior year. Did go on to wrestle at the University of Minnesota Morris. I believe was an All-American yep. at the University of Minnesota Morris. We got a real scramble going on with uh, AJ Jenks really going after it. Both wrestlers flopping back and forth. Looks like we got a tie score of two to two. Both wrestlers getting it. Looks like uh, Justin Jenks, excuse me, AJ Jenks. AJ Jenks. Had a takedown and then a reversal by the Big Lake wrestler. AJ tried to do a Granby roll here. The Big Lake wrestler has the legs in and is really tough riding on top right now, making AJ really work hard not to give up any back points at this time. And this is Derek Helgo, too, listed in the little pre-program as one of the six tough wrestlers from Big Lake. Derek Helgo working the legs and was able to pick up a power half to turn that into back points. And we now have a scramble situation. Nothing. Wow. We gave up three back points or two back and points and one point escape yep. Jenks, or three back points, excuse me. So three back points for the Big Lake wrestler and Jenks was able to scramble out of that pick up and escape. So Jenks it's five, five to three, three uh, Helgo up on top of Jenks. Five three, Jenks goes right back after him with a takedown attempt, uh, picks up that arm and is trying to secure that arm. Both back up to their feet. Shot by Shot by Derek Helgo off the mat they go. Score 5 3, Big Lake. Derek Helgo ahead of 169th grader, AJ Jenks. Really, really a nice looking ninth grader, Boy, AJ Jenks. Unbelievable. Put together and again, he's one of those wrestlers, again, that's wrestled just a ton throughout youth wrestling in middle school and last year on the varsity and JV combined. And just again, ninth grader with a lot of experience here and somebody I'm sure the Flyers are looking forward to provide. You know, many team points throughout the year here for them. Good start tonight. 12 seconds to go in the first period here at 160. We're coming down to the last five matches tonight. We had a heck of a flurry to start this match. Oh, both wrestlers really going after it. Now they've slowed down a little bit to end the period. One second to go. And that'll and end that'll it. end the first period. I believe it. Big Lake will have the choice. And Big Lake uh, will defer the choice to AJ. And AJ is going to choose. He's going to go up. Coach both Mike Hedrickson says up. Yeah. Both up. They're going to take the neutral position. Both wrestlers were able to score takedowns, so not a bad strategy for both of them. Well, the team scored her 37 to six. Little falls on a virtue of five pins. Wow. Five falls, I should say. Five Derek guys. Calgo attempts a takedown. AJ able to battle him off. Both wrestlers, uh, again, there was a lot of flurry going on to begin there. They both have slowed down a little bit. There's a decent shot by Jenks, but able to be countered by Helgo. And now Jenks able to have head position nope. and the arm tucked. Helgo using, showing his experience there and able to trip that up and score two points. Now looking to back points. back points. And there's back points in an awful tough situation. Doesn't look good AJ. here for AJ. Could this be the first fall by Becker? A big lake, excuse me. And Helgo is just driving that shoulder. There it is. And there it is, a fall for senior Derek Helgo, 160 from Big Lake. 53 seconds of the second period. That'll make the team score. Flyers 37, Big Lake 9. That was a very exciting match. Uh, Jenks had Helgo in trouble for a while, but I think the experience of that senior against the ninth grader showed up this time. Now out comes We're gonna see another Jenks. AJ's brother, Justin Jenks, who is currently ranked at 160 in the state. I think you've and got- he's ranked number eight. Number eight, yep. In triple A, so- uh, Cole, Cole Sixberry. Very respected uh, wrestler for the Flyers. And again, I'm sure one that you're gonna see some real aggressive action with right off the get-go. And we're at the 170 Seven. pound right now. A little Falls, a great night tenant, AJ only two Jackson losses. And a beautiful single leg takedown that he turns into two points for the Flyers here in the first period of the 170 pound match. And Justin, like his brother, quick mover, quick mover. get backing up and they're just Good strength. one points. Good strength, a lot of experience. Justin able to break Cole Sixbury to the mat here. It looks like he's trying to hook up an arm bar and does have the arm he's across. Got it. And he's got possibly it. Possibly trying to run that arm bar for a fall or some back points. Cole Sixbury battling the arm bar off. 120 to go in the first Justin period Justin Jenks here. decides I'm not gonna use the arm bar, I'm gonna switch up and try that famous flyer cradle. He's able to pick up the far elbow, see if he can bring that head and knee together and score off of the cradle. And here he does comes have the it turn. Up. 
And he's going to hip in, and here comes the cradle. There it is. There's back points, and it's awful tight. This, this is going to be, be there it is. Wow. At uh, 59 seconds. seconds of the first period, Justin Jenks opens his 2014 season with a fall and scores six more team points for the Flyers, makes the score 49 to 12, I believe. Mike, six pins for Little Falls tonight. Unless they've already put the six up there. They might already put the six up there. I, I think they did, yeah. So it's 43, 43 12. 12. And here comes uh, Senior, one of the few seniors in the lineup for the Flyers, I might add, Jesse, Jesse Roche. Roche. Comes from the Roach wrestling family. Uh, uncles all wrestled. Uh, his father wrestled a little bit, I believe, but his uncles, I know for sure, wrestled when I was coaching here and brings a ton of experience as well. Jesse Roach, 182, wrestling Nash O'Leary. Nash O'Leary from Big Lake. And O'Leary, let's see if there's any scoop on him. Nothing in the record here. Uh, last year in the the Little Falls Flyers didn't wrestle last year, but they did win uh, t in 2012, 38-29. So this is a, a little farther reaching match than that was two years ago. Correct, Jesse Roach on top here, wrestling against sophomore O'Leary. O'Leary. Roach is looking for that cradle. And there he is, he takes two points and he turns it uh, almost immediately into a far side cradle, but O'Leary able to battle that off. Here comes. Looked like Jesse wanted the cradle on the other side. Yeah, he wants was able to get to the left side. Hook that far side elbow up and trying to work again, work uh, that head to the knee and get that cradle hooked up. 54 seconds to go in the first period here. Roach again working the far elbow, trying to drive that head knee together. Looks like he might have it. Nope, O'Leary able to battle out and not give up that cradle. I'm sure he's been witnessing that cradle and its effectiveness oh, as he's been sitting on the mat. I'm thinking that the big leg coaches are gonna say, I think we're gonna watch that cradle next time. Yes. So O'Leary tries for a reversal. Roach able to let him slip by. And there's a cradle. There it is. Up there it is. Going to turn him. There's the back points. Again, a real tight Can you cradle that leg, for the Mike. Flyers. And this is there it is. Up. At the uh, 140. 40 of the first period. Seven pin. Seven pin for the Flyers. A score of 49 to 12. Unbelievable. The uh, Fall City here in Little Falls tonight. Seventh pin of the night. Roach makes the score 49 to 12, team score. Jesse Roach again, a senior scoring a fall. Again, just a great way to start your 2014 season. Now we're out on. Well, Wyatt Ewell against Mikkel Schultz. So Mikkel Schultz, one of those wrestlers wrestling for Little Falls that's been out about wrestling some JV. This might be Mikkel's first experience on the varsity. I'm not 100% sure of that. But uh, right now, 195, Wyatt Jewell, one of the experienced wrestlers for Big Lake, has Mickle in a little bit of trouble as he scores a takedown and now has a double arm bar hooked up, which is tough to get out of. Going to be very difficult for Mickle to defend, but he did a good job, was able to break his, get his arms back free. Well, this is where the experience is just starting to happen on in uh, Mickle's life, man, right here against a quality wrestler like Wyatt Jewell. He's going to learn a lot. So now uh, uh, Wyatt Jewell able to hook up the near side cradle for the can big he turn him over? And we'll see if he can turn up, turn over Mikkel Schultz for the Flyers. Mikkel doing a great job of battling. He's got, he's got the arm through and has, has Jewell in trouble. It's a two-point reversal for Mikkel Schultz. But Jewell able to flip right over and pop those hips up and get the two points right back. Score four to two. Big Lake wrestler in the lead as we enter the final minute of the first period. Nice move by Mickle though. At 195, boy, you can tell the things are uh, lots of beef on the floor tonight. There's a half Nelson on Mickle Schultz. He's boy. trying to look away and peel that off. But oh boy. There's the experience of Wyatt Jewell as a junior. Uh, looks like he's one of Big Lake's more experienced wrestlers, able to put Mickle on his back. There it is. The fall. Uh, one fall of the night for 41. Makes the score 49 to 18 in favor of Little Falls. Well, first, uh, that's a second pin, uh, third pin, excuse me, for, for Big Lake. That's all their points on pins, so it's 49 to 18. And we're gonna go to the 220 pound match, kid I really love to watch. 
Gage Blackinger against Dylan O'Leary. Gage Blackinger, of course, uh, has wrestled again. One of those guys that we can talk about. Be not, a, you know, he's only he's a junior, but he's been around the mat for a long, oh, long time. Oh, years. Uh, when I first moved to Little Falls, his father was the heavyweight wrestler for Little Falls uh, state tournament entrant. Uh, Tough, tough wrestler. And, and that uh, was, uh, what do we have there? That was, his dad's name was John, I John. believe, back in 1989 or 90, 91, something like that. We're looking Shh. back at the records here. So, maybe not in the... Not in this group. Remember, there was a time, David, if you remember, when uh, Little Falls heavyweights were extremely tough across yep. the state, and so they didn't wrestle varsity a whole lot till their senior year. That's he started right. with, with uh, I believe, Bleckinger would have took over after Craig Swanson. Yep. And then Bleckinger and then Neil Sather. Yep, I remember and Neil. And Jeremy Morozik and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so we had a good run of uh, very quality heavyweights for a long time here at Little Falls High School. And Gage doing a nice job. Gage has really uh, muscled up too. He's a big boy and he's got a lot of strength. Did a nice job. I know Mr. Decan, the football coach, was very impressed with his play this year as he played football this fall for the Flyers. Did a nice job there. And here he is resting at 220 pounds versus Dylan O'Leary of Big Lake. And we are down to 28 seconds to go in the first period. No score. 220 pounds, both wrestlers feeling each other out. Well, we know how the match is going to end, Mike. It's going to come down to see how Dustin Tabbitt's going to do against Garrett Moran. Let's see what Gage does here against O'Leary. Again, this is one of those interesting things. First match of the year. You've got two big guys here that are trying to work themselves into shape and, you know, could come down the longer this stays close to see who's, who's in better shape, you know, as we enter that second, third period. In this Absolutely. Match. This is where uh, all your training pays off big time. And of course, Mike Henderson's got a great training regimen for these kids. They are working out, lifting weights, running. They do a great job. And of course, the, the uh, infamous purple flag day, if mm -hmm. they're not in shape, will be brought out. And it's an interesting thing. And so sometimes we'll have to ask a wrestler about what purple flag day means. I can't wait. It's, uh, it's an interesting thing. It's something that I brought here when I was assistant coach under Ben Benson. And it's kind of a mark of, of uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, the wrestlers, they're pretty proud of the fact that they're able to do some purple flag days. And when they oh. complete them, they're pretty proud of their feet. And Blecker getting a little trouble here right now against O'Leary on his back. There's some back points coming up. O'Leary was able to catch it. Oh, nice job by Blecker. So right here we got a reversal and we're, and we're getting back points back. Blecker did a nice job, makes a score. I believe it's going to be, be five or four. I what do we guess. got? Oh, we got a couple clasps in there as well. So we're going to have to sort this one out. Yeah. Right now it's five to two according to the scoreboard. That's uh, O'Leary on top. And Etzler talking to the scorers, Mike Moore and Karen Warner, my partner in crime. We're gonna take this time again to thank our crew from Flyer Media Productions. Hey, we're sporting our new shirts tonight. I wish we could get a shot of them. We just got brand new shirts. Our Flyer Media Productions logo on the left chest. And they're really wonderful. I wanna thank Dylan or Damian Jaschke on camera tonight. He's phantom running all the cameras over there. And I want to thank Alex Wurzeka up in the booth, along with Maya Richner doing a wonderful job with graphics. And look at the graphics. Maya. They even got her name. Yeah, I know. They got him on the right side, too. What do you think of that? What a deal. <laughs> it's great to see this, and we want to thank our uh, superintendent and our principal here at the high school, Tim Bjorgi, Steve Jones, superintendent, for supporting Fire Media Productions all through its career. We'll be back with Channel 181. We hope... Uh, Start of the new year, 2015. So this will go live on channel 181 at that time, too. Bleckinger hooking up the far side cradle right off the whistle. The score ended up 7-4 after that flurry of activity here in the second period. Bleckinger does have the cradle hooked up. O'Leary able to battle it off. Bleckinger trying to get back in control. O'Leary battled off. Looks like we'll see who can get control here. It might be an escape. And there O'Leary yep. gains another point for an escape. Makes the score 8-4. Exciting 220 pound match we have right in store. I was going to mention, Dave, the channel 181 is, uh, you know, w one of those things that'll be the education channel here in Little yes. Falls. I know that it'd be a big part of your job uh, to continue to provide programming for that along with the help of a whole bunch of people. Lots. But, uh, you know, really looking forward to providing what's going on in Little Falls schools throughout the year and let people, even if they are not able to make it to a, ma a match or a meet or a game, they can see it on TV or they can see what's going on at our concert 
concerts or what's going on here in the school district. And, uh, you know, there's so many great things that our kids do in the community and on the ball. It's just really exciting to have that channel available. Well, it is. And we're working on having a totally student run. And I do have kids doing coverage of the elementary school Christmas concerts all month long. And starting in 2015, a uh, couple of wrestling matches at the middle school. We've got them on the docket. Big announcement for next year, we're going to do the Lucky Lindy 50th anniversary cross-country oh, awesome. meet in August. That'll so be awesome. In that's September, a, I mean, we got that's the That's a great already. event, and it'll be really exciting. Here we are entering 15 seconds, going to second period, score 8-4 to four in favor of the Big Lake wrestler O'Leary. Blackinger battling them off. It'll be interesting, like I said, third period. There's been a couple flurries yes. here. They can score in a hurry. Can Gage get this done? Interesting, too, that Big Lake has scored all their points in the match on pins. Three pins, 18 points for Little Falls, seven pins for Little Falls. And the third period's going to start, and we got uh, Gage Blackinger Blackinger down. chooses down and uh, hope to get some, some flurry of activity going, get an escape or a reversal, and perhaps catch O'Leary, put him and get some more back points. Gage trying to book his uh, self up into a Granby fin roll, looks like. Oh, he Ooh, a nice try. Up. He did a nice try. A little bit not exactly the way it was designed. But uh, hope he can come back up and try again here and get some space again provided here and score some points. You know, I'm really excited. What I'm excited for, Dave, when we get this video production stuff going, and one day we'll look back and say, I remember that kid when he was in high school. I want to watch him on CNN or ESPN, ESPN. or something. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, it'll be exciting to see that. Gates Blackinger attempts a roll, not able to complete it. Uh, O'Leary almost had his hand trapped, which would have been trouble for Gage. Gage again coming, trying to get some space, and there he is, able to gain one point escape, makes the score eight to five, minute and 16 to go, third period. Wouldn't it be great to get this tied up too? It wow. would be exciting. So here's Gage really pushing now. We'll see who's got the, who, how much energy is left in the tank here as we enter the last minute of the third period in their first duel of the year. And these are big boys at 220, and they must have weighed in close to weight too. I'm thinking you got their weigh in at uh, 218. Uh, yeah, 218 for uh, 218 for Leary, 219 for Blackinger. So wow. they're pretty evenly matched. Senior Dylan O'Leary, junior Gage Blackinger, eight to five, third period, 50, 45 seconds to go, third period, eight to five. Blackinger working hard, trying to get this thing tied up, or perhaps catch catch Dylan O'Leary in some kind of move, and there's behind him. Yes, Mike. There's behind him. If you can get him down, you're going to see him probably let him go right away. There's two. They're going to try to let him go, but O'Leary has a leg. He's the leg. just going to have to be very careful with that. If he can get away. Can he get him off? 23 seconds, Mike. Can he tie it? So there, there's a oh, oh, the the And there's the oh, 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 It looks like Gage Beckinger's going to come from behind. He's come with a foul here. Could be a foul for sure. He's got three back points right now, and they're making a score 10 to, seven eight. to eight. And that's eight seconds, Mike. Like it's going to end 10 to eight in favor of Gage Bleckinger. Unless he gets a foul. Just courageous effort by Gage Bleckinger. That's first it. First match here. Gage Bleckinger. behind with under 45 seconds to go. Great job by Gage Bleckinger to come from behind and catch the senior Dylan O'Leary for uh, a takedown and three back points right at the end of the match there. Wow. Well, Gage, that's going to be happy. Uh, Gage is happy. That makes a score, I believe. 52, 52 to, to three point. And here we go with our final match of the night between heavyweight, 285 pound wrestler Dustin Tabbitt, a junior from Little Falls, against Garrett Moran of Big Lake. Of course, Dustin Tabbitt's brother Tom out there in Valley City, North Dakota, playing football. Yep, state entrant for came out for wrestling first time last year, made the state tournament as a heavyweight. Had a great season. And here's little brother Dustin and, and little brother with yeah. Well, <laughs> little brother's just a term, a figure of speech figure there, Mike. Speech, but there's Dustin yeah. able to get behind. Garrett Moran, if he can bring him to the mat, he's going to score two points, and he does. There's two points for Dustin Tabbitt. 2-0 in favor of the Flyer wrestler. A minute and 30 to go in the first period. Dustin, again, looking to pick up, again, like all the wrestlers, one of their first thoughts in their mind when they're on top is, can I get that far elbow and work on a cradle? Well, what a breakdown there by Tabbitt. Tabbitt uh, was trying to free his hand away, and, of course, the... Uh, Big Lake wrestler hanging on the hand, not trying to let him get that far side cradle hooked up. Dustin got the leg taken away and trying to work again the cradle situation. Kind of funny today, I saw Dustin in the hallway and a girl said, you got your hair cut. First time she's seen him with shorter hair all year long. Let's hope it's not the Samson's curse for Dustin. So far, it looks like it's working for him. Looking good, looking good. He's on top and pretty, pretty good control here, the Big Lake wrestler. Big Lake wrestler Garrett Moran. 
senior weighing in at 218 pounds versus Dustin Tabbitt, junior, weighing in at 262 pounds. So giving up some weight is uh, some weight. Moran. Dustin able to drive Moran back to the mat. Moran almost had a sit-out situation where he might have been able to score some points, but Dustin Tabbitt driving him back down to the mat, trying to keep him broken down. Of course, of course, Garrett Moran trying to keep his base. Dustin Tabbitt doing a nice job. He's got the leg trap. He's going to have to let that go, or Mr. Etzer might call a stall. Call a dangerous stall there, but uh, he's letting him go with it. Six seconds, five seconds to go in the first period. Two nothing, Tabbitt trying to hook up the far side cradle. There and there's it is. The, end of the first period. I believe Dustin Tabbitt's choice as he enters the second period. He refers to the Big Lake wrestler. Big Lake wrestler chooses both up. Neutral position. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, four minutes left total in this whole match. And we'll see what happens if Dustin can put him on his back or ride it out. Four minutes to go in the match. Four minutes to go in the meet. Flyers in the lead, 52 to 18. Good opening match for the Flyers. Showed their pinning ways again with, I believe, seven seven falls. Seven pins, Mike. Seven falls at this point. Close and a couple other ones. Just a great effort. As impressed with the effort, the ability to battle through. We saw Leo Wilsek oh. win a triple overtime, overtime yes. match. You've seen Gage Breckinger come from behind with 40 seconds to go to score five points to win his match. It's, it's exciting. Looks like an exciting year for Flyer wrestling as we move forward throughout the year. Well, we're excited now for that Friday matchup between Malak and Princeton. A double duel. First time in many years we're going to do a double duel. Mike will be back on Friday with me. And we'll give you the play-by-play -play in color right here on Channel 181, uh, LFCS TV. You know, a big big early season conference match for the Flyers as they wrestle Malacca, who is, again, one of the perennial favorites in, in not only the Granite Ridge, but Section 6A, I believe, and uh, 6AA, excuse me, and in the state. They're always always battling a lot. great program at Malacca. Uh, of course, Foley in the conference is... Always, always, always tough. It's tough. And among the top in the state. And you now, know, Ronald Frutenberg uh, retired this year from Foley, didn't he? Okay. Uh, you he, know, that could be the case. He did. He retired. I okay. saw the thing in the St. Cloud okay. Times. Lyle, of course, big. coached at Foley for, for uh, 30, 30 years. 30 plus. 30 plus. Years. Yep. And so they'll have a new coach. I'm not sure who it is at this point. But uh, I know their head football coach, Larry Herm, has been a longtime assistant. Not sure if Larry is still there or if he. Retired with Lyle as well, but we'll see when we wrestle Foley at some point this year. And again, uh, Mora, of course, a tough wrestling community, always has a tough team. Zimmerman, always tough, and of course, Albany. So Albany, yeah. there is no uh, easy nights out in the conference here as we uh, move, move ahead in the season. Kind of funny how some sports really get to shine in a new conference. Wrestling is one of them. We happen to be in one of the better conferences in wrestling in central Minnesota. Well, that's the end of the second period here. Tabbit up 4 nothing. Tabbit did a nice job. Gained a takedown now. Um, coaches tell Dusty, we'd like you to go on top for this third period and see if we can get a turn here to end this period. So Dusty up 4 nothing. Um, attempt to, attempt to uh, ride Garrett Moran, maybe break him down, get some back points, possible fall. Dustin did a nice job of stopping in Garrett's first move. Get him back. If he can get him busted flat here, it'd be obviously to Dustin's advantage and there he is he's looking for that looking for that leg taking things away always looking for that flyer cradle that's right and that cradle uh, has been the it's been the pinning move tonight the winning pinning now move. dustin's got him broken down looking like he's trying to hook up what we call a power half or a half nelson that they turn into a power half and again gary moran down on his base trying to work his way up dustin tabbitt using his weight to his advantage and uh, weight and balance to keep it pressure on gary moran Yeah, Dustin's still working, working. They haven't gotten up yet. Four nothing still. Dustin doing a nice job trying to hook up the far side cradle again. Needs to keep needs to keep Garrett Moran broken down, not to give up any points here, especially late in the match. We saw how that goes in this in the last match in favor of Gage Blackinger. Oh, so what a nice that'll be living in full color here. We got the highlights on that at the high school cube website too, on the Little Falls activities page. And Etzler's just looking. There's no stall going on here. They're still trying to work. Both wrestlers working. Dustin Tabbitt riding on top here, keeping Garrett Moran broken down. Mr. Chris Etzler, referee, longtime official with the St. Cloud Officials Association. We got a warning now for. And there's a warning for Dustin Tabbitt. And you can see Chris Etzler telling him you need to work from side to side and look for the fall. Uh, they will call you if you stay if you stay per 
if you stay parallel, they will call you for stalling yep. at the top. You need to get all perpendicular, move from side to side. Oh, good move by Tabbitt. Good move by Tabbitt, catches Gary oh, Moran, on his ball. Oh, oh. Quick fall. Oh, yeah, 130 of the third period. 35-30 in the match. Oh. Dustin Tabbitt picks up the eighth fall for the Little Falls Flyers. And I believe that will make the score 58, 18. 58 to 18. There it is. Great opening night for the Little Falls Flyers, showing their pinning ways. And uh, able to pick up an early season win here at the Little Falls Gymnasium. Great night for Flyer Wrestling. Well, well, there you have it tonight, our first opening match here. Mike Olson, Dave Gertz, along with everybody here. Just recapping a couple of great things tonight. Eight pins for Little Falls. I think the match of the night, Leo Wilson going triple overtime, picking up three points for Little Falls. And uh, give, give credit to our Big Lake, two three pins for all their point scoring. Great night tonight for wrestling, and we're going to be back on Friday, the double duel with Malacca and Princeton right here at the Flyer Gymnasium starting at 5 o'clock. We're going to have Malacca wrestling first, and then they'll clue the match and Princeton will wrestle little walls. Well, we're looking forward to that Friday night match. Great pleasure to be here tonight to watch the great opening night action here at Little Falls uh, Gym. It was a great night for the Flyers and a good, again, a good opening night, a good measuring stick to the season. Looks like it's going to be a great year for Flyer Wrestling. It's going to be wonderful. We're back again on Friday. I want to thank our crew again tonight, Alex Rzeka directing, Maya Richner doing a great job with graphics, and Damian Jaschke on camera. For Mike Olson, this is Dave Gertz saying good night. We will see you on Friday right here. I uh, just want to mention Thursday night, we do have the Little Falls Middle School Choir Concert broadcast right here on High School Cube. You'll see uh, one of our FMP students doing that. But for now, Mike, I'll see you on Friday. Friday. Can't wait. Friday, Dave. Can't wait. Should be an exciting night. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Again. Good night, everybody.